Board of Assessment Appeals Meeting. Take two. <laughs> Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Okay, so attendance. Attendance, yes. Colette Cuso. Here. Helene Daly. Here. Carol Langland. Here. Kathleen Griffin. Here. Peter Rupert. Here. That completes the roll call. Okay. I'm pulling up the agenda because I forgot to bring a copy. Of course, I can't find it now. All right. Well, because it's the new, the new beginning of the new season, uh, the next step would be to elect new officers before we begin anything else. Does anyone have? Does anyone want to nominate an office person for the president, or the chairman spot? I nominate Paulette Cuso. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? I nominate Kathleen Griffin. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. All in favor of? You need this. Yeah, please. All in favor of Paul Cuso, please raise your hand. Okay. That's three. All in favor of Kathleen Griffin. I'm going to guess it's two. So. Kath Kathleen, you're voting for yourself? Yes, I am. This is Kathleen. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I will keep the chair position. Nominations for vice chair. I will nominate Helene Daly. Oh. I'm oops, sorry. Go ahead, please. I'm going to nominate Kathleen Griffin. Okay. Carol? No. Okay. I just said, oh. Okay. All in favor of Helene Daly? Who's the vice chair now? Me? You. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All in favor of Helene Daly right. as vice chair. Please raise your hand. <sighs> All in favor of Kathleen Griffin? Please raise your hand. So it's three to two in favor of I, This is Kathleen. I'll vote for myself. Yeah. Oh, we thought so. I said three to two. Yeah, I had a feeling. Secretary is next. Nominations for secretary. I nominate Kathleen Griffin. Okay. I nominate Carol Langland. Oh, you want to be secretary? Were you secretary this year? I well, where have you been? I, I, you know what? I can't remember. <laughs> well, Paula did a lot of the work. At, at I thought Kathleen was secretary. We eliminated a lot of no, the previous year. stuff. Gosh. <laughs> Kathleen was secretary. You did a lot of work, Kathleen, <laughs> for not being secretary. I, I don't remember. I, I know. Work. Can't help myself. Can't help myself. It's okay. I know. <laughs> All in favor of Kathleen Griffin, the secretary, please raise your hand. Well, that would be me. I got it, too. And all in favor of Carol Langland as secretary, please raise your hand. It's three to two in favor of Carol. So the new officers for the coming, for 2023, would be Paul Cuso as chair, Helene Daly as vice chair, and Carol Langland as secretary. Okay. And I'll just add that I'm always happy to help Carol as well. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, before we move on to what's the, what is actually item number three, with the adoption of the schedule, um, the town clerk uh, requ requires that I just go over a couple of things with you. We're supposed to do this at the start of every season. And that is, uh, it's here somewhere. Um, uh, it has to do with code of conduct. That's number one. And so um, keeping the same charter, the code of conduct has not changed. What I would like to say is I don't think that any of us, myself being the biggest offender, I think, we did, I did not really follow the code of conduct last year, I don't think, and I, it's hard for us because our group is small and we are, we are um, arguing back and forth on a particular topic. So it's hard to keep those rules. It's not as strict as a board of assessment, a board of um, selectmen of the RTM, where they really do full, true Roberts rules and they follow a strict procedure. So I think that, you know, for this year, we're going to make an attempt to do it properly we will, we're, I'd like to keep us doing the um, Roberts Rules for small boards, and um, we will try to be more civil and respectful of each other. So, in, in, in keeping with that, I think that the best way for us to do that, although we need to cross talk and, and discuss, I think that we should, who's ever presenting the appeal, I think that person should be able to do that without interruption or question. When they finish presenting the appeal, I think that we should go take turns 
with questions, comments, whatever. And then after everyone has had a chance to speak once, then we can cross-talk and discuss anything we want to discuss. If there's any more discussion to be had, any questions, any statements, anything like that. Because otherwise, it's too unruly. And again, I'll blame myself for that, but we all do it. So I think that we need to try to keep it. And I think being a little more orderly may move us through a little bit quicker with some of the work. So we'll follow that. Does anybody have any questions about that or any comments or any suggestions? Sounds reasonable. Okay. That was that. And then there's the piece that we talk about every year, which is the piece about our purpose and who we're here for and how we do not take any more leeway with ourselves than we would with anybody else. So the board members are the code of conduct, the board members, any board. We have to avoid a conflict of interest. Even the appearance of impropriety can be considered a problem with the public or with anybody else. So we want to make sure that we behave in a professional manner. We are not to gain anything for ourselves in any of these meetings. So it doesn't mean we can't appeal our own taxes if we want to, but we have to follow the same procedure that everybody else appeals, that everybody else follows, the idea is to not have an unfair advantage over any other taxpayer in your appeal. We have the Roberts Rules for Small Boards, and I will pass those out again in case we forgot what those are. I think I went over that privilege. I always talk about that. Okay, that's good. So basically that's it for that. Now, our purpose. Oh, sorry, Carol. No, that's all right. I just wanted to keep it up. As agents of the public, this is from the standards of conduct for the town. As agents of the public, we are holding office or position for the benefit of the public. The public interest is our primary concern, and we shall faithfully discharge the duties of the office regardless of personal consideration. So we are here for the public. We're not here for ourselves. We're here for the town. We're here for the taxpayer. And I think that was it for the town. Okay. Any questions? I'm going to be, excuse me, I'm just going to be offline for about three minutes, and then I'll be back on. Thanks. Okay. What adoption of 2023 schedule of meetings, proposed schedule? I did schedule. I sent it out with that email. Basically, it's the whole month of March, and we just have to, we have to set it up that way. It's easier to set it up that way than to try to add dates later. Is anything different, I mean, I skimmed it. Is anything different in this year proposed schedule from last year? The only difference is that last year we started, we took some days in between finishing what were the hearings then, and then starting the deliberations. We're not going to do that this year. Unless we have a smaller pool of appeals where we can say, we don't need to start right away because we have time. By law, we have to have everything done by the 31st. And I thought we had so much time last year, and we ended up like at the last minute trying to finish. And then what ended up happening was, after we had decided on an appeal, I don't remember the particular address, but I remember the case. It was a farm on some little street in Southport. Oh, I was? I don't think it was. I don't know. There were two that we did. This one in particular, the guy was living on, his property ended up being only a half acre of his private use by the time he was finished with all his farm stuff. And we had the assessor, and he explained everything to us. And I agreed, too. I mean, I voted for the way we, the decision we came to. Then I thought about it a few days later. I'm like, something's not right with this. Because the guy didn't get credit for the fact that he's in a one acre zone, and he's only got a half acre of property. So it's not like he can do much with that property. His house is the way it is. He'd have to get a variance if he wanted to do anything to it. No guarantee. And he can't certainly sell it as a building lot to anybody. They would have to take the whole property and change it. It's not just a slam dunk. OK, he's got all this property. He can do whatever he wants. So I thought that maybe we needed to look at that again. And I tried to do that by calling the assessor and telling him that we had, I had a question. I wanted to bring the group back and talk about it. It was like two days before the end of the month. And he never got back to me until the end of the day. And his response was, I'm off tomorrow. See you Monday. Well, Monday was too late. We'd be on the dates. So I don't want to get stuck like that again, where if something came up, we have no time left. Also, we have to leave time to go over his things, because he usually has a list at the end that we go over. So I want to make sure we have time to do that without rushing through it. So the schedule, so that's the difference in the schedule. And this is a tentative schedule. I put every Monday through Thursday on the schedule through the end of the month, because like I said, if we have to add them, then there's a whole process. It might be a special meeting if we don't do it in time. So we can always cancel meetings. 
So, so starting at the event. beginning of the month? Starting March 1st. March 1st. Um, remember, this is everything. We don't separate them out. So starting March 1st, we begin meeting with the, or sitting with the... Fact-finding. Yes, the fact-finding. Yeah, thank you. We start the fact-finding where we sit with the actual uh, appellate and go over their, their information. Once we finish all that, then we can start the deliberation. Mm -hmm. So, but the schedules pretty much stay the same. The schedules for um, sitting with the public, I started at 10. If you want to start at 9, you can. I will not start that early. So, I put down 10 to 12, uh, 1 to 4, and then 4 or 5, I don't know what it was, to 8 or 9. Usually 8, I think, is enough for that. We don't need to I'll do 9, no problem. Uh, but if we want to spend on how many, yeah. again, if we only have a few, we have, you know, we have the, the luxury of trying to decide what we really want the hours to be. But for now, that's the way it's set up. Um, basically, that's it for the, for the schedule. Uh, again, this year, I will make an attempt to talk to the powers that be um, about the difference between fact-finding and hearings uh, or meetings and what that means with regard to Freedom of Information Act. We do not have to record what we do with the public in their private sessions if it's a fact-finding session. And that comes right from the FOI, which I have in writing. So we'll be going over that. I'll be going over that with people to see uh, what we can do. Okay. Because the attorney last year, at the last minute, first he had said, okay, we didn't have to, and then at the last minute changed his mind. But that was his opinion. There was no law that said we had to do it. Well, I'm, I'm a little bit, I'm not certain why we wouldn't be, um, you know, recording them because, I mean, everything is public, you know, public record. I mean, they're making, you know, they're supposed to be factually accurate, you know, when what they're presenting. And, you know, it's not a secret. They're, you know, they're appealing. That's not a secret. You know, their reasoning should be public you know, public knowledge, so I'm not really sure why we would not be recording it. I find that we've done this because we are recording the deliberations where all their information will be made public um, and everything they've told us is going to be repeated back. So I don't see why we have to spend the town's money and our time in the process of recording something that is not really necessary to record. Plus I have a, and you know, I, I shouldn't be personal, but I have a feeling about people having some right to privacy. And if I come to see Helene, or Carol, or anybody, you know, and, and, and I'm doing my tax appeal, I shouldn't have to have people listening to what I'm saying. The information that's pertinent, what I'm saying about my property, what I want done to my property as far as value, and the, and the documents that I've provided will become public in the deliberation. And then they're, then they're, they're, and they're in the, um, they're kept in the town's office. We have access to them on the website, and the public has access to that as well. They can look at any document they want. When did we start doing that? Yeah, when did that? we start doing that? Because we did not do that. And the, the FOI rule has been in effect since 1976, I think. So when did it become the thing that we have to do? We never, we never did that. I don't know. But, it, I mean, it was never a problem before when yeah, we didn't never, right. do it. Well, you I, you're, you're, we never did it. Yeah. I mean, you have to set up all those rooms. All those I'm just rooms, curious. Make sure you got it recorded. Can you... Um, you can you can listen to those online. Yeah. 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 You can. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just a matter of it's a lot of time and, and effort and money for the town that we don't need to be wasting mm -hmm. or spending because it's not required. If it was required, we have to do it. We have to do it. Right. Right. But it really isn't required um, because yeah. of what we're doing in those sessions, and it's only one person. Mm -hmm. If it were two or three of us, it would be different. I'm I'm, I'm not sure what what the difference is. I mean, you know. <coughs> I mean, I know we're reporting back, but I mean, the the person is giving testimony, and the fact that we should all be able to hear what their testimony is, not the testimony through, you know, through the, you know, presenter, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I just don't see why that. Except that we don't really. I mean, I I only go by what you're telling me and what Kathleen is telling me, what Carol's telling me. I don't listen to all of them. Do you listen to them? Do I listen to them? Yeah. All of them? Sure. Oh. I mean, I, mean I, I, no, I, I have listened to many of them. I don't listen to, you know, all of them. I don't listen to all of them. I mean, but, you know, I mean, why, I mean, I just don't understand why, you know, that would, I, I just don't see why that would be an issue. I mean, if, if, this is a public, this is a public, 
um, process, and you know the person's coming in. There's you know they're swearing under oath that they're you know they're speaking truthfully, and so there shouldn't be anything. Right, know. and the, and for, and for that. And again, the, the the you know the you know obviously some people come and they say oh, you know I have hardship, you know, but that that's not really what the you know this is not yeah. the purpose for that, right? Right. right. So. And I, yeah, and the fact that we, you know, we all take an oath, they take an oath, we, you know, we take an oath doing this job. So we should be able to rely on each other to present the, you know, correct information. Um, the only downside I see is if, you know, it, it is costing the town money and time and, and resources. I mean, uh, you know, that would be the, the only end. I do think it's a little bit of uh, an invasion of privacy. I do think that. I agree with you on that. But um, because it, it, it's in the public record that you can read um, what comments, or I mean, what uh, what took place in the meeting. But, um, you know, I could go either way on this, but I'm leaning more towards not recording it. Just because we did it for so many years, not recording it, and it didn't seem to be a problem, yeah. but, you know. Well, less is more to me, <laughs> Kathleen. It requires more of it, yeah. the agenda. Uh, so th this is Kathleen. So I just wanted, I am back for a couple minutes anyway. So just wanted to comment on that. That just so you know, if, if they are subject to FOI, any member of the public is allowed to tape any meeting. So if you don't want that, that doesn't mean that somebody else can't tape them. That you have Absolutely. to allow taping to happen. That's an FOI. Only yes, it is. F, it is an FOI if it's considered FOIable, as people like to say. But if it's considered a public public meeting, that's, that's what we're really meeting. talking about. It's a, okay. It's only a public meeting based on the, the definition of public meeting, which does not include right. something called fact finding, per Tom Hendricks from the FOI. Um, right. Until he changed his mind, and then he said. These are public meetings if they're publicly noticed and they're per state statute and you know, we whatever. Liz, I would just get, if you want to confirm with him whether they're fact findings or they're actually public meetings, then we can, you know, have a better conversation about whether the public has a right to record them or not. Well, I actually did have a conversation with him and based on, I think, the, where we got hung up last time on it was exactly where we're getting hung up again is the, um, the terminology. And that if we're saying we're having a meeting, a hearing, a session, then yes, it becomes uh, covered under the FOI. But for the, the description of what we're doing with people in those rooms, he was the one who said, well, that's fact-finding. It wasn't me. I didn't even think of that expression. And therefore, it's not considered a meeting of a public agency and da 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 da, -da all the things that go into that. So as far as he was concerned, a fact-finding Fact-finding is not considered a meeting. Now, we went through this with the attorney, and um, he said, okay. He agreed that we could do it this way, and then changed his mind, and I have no idea why, but he did. Um, and he said that they went, you know, they talked about it in their office, and their opinion was that it was considered covered under FOI. But that's not the law, and it's not their rule. That's their opinion of how it should be handled. So that was that. We'll see what happens now. You know, they may say we have to do it. I think it's worth, from, it's my time, so I don't care. I'll, I'll give it a try. Um, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But I, I think it's a crime that we waste the town's money on things we don't need to waste it on. We've got plenty of other ways to waste it. I don't think we need to waste it on that. Well, how much does it cost to record the meeting? Are we paying extra for that? Well, I don't think anybody town, is paying anybody. Well, the, the employee, from, the town employee is being paid to set it all up for us. And, you know, that's, that's time yeah. away from his regular job. So to me, that's spend, that's wasting money. Um, okay, but I don't think they we don't get charged. The only thing we get charged for is, I believe, is for Kathy's minutes and any janitorial time at, that we're there later at. And I actually, I don't even think we pay for that. I think the town pays for that. So it's really for the minutes that we get charged for our minutes. But I think the hearing minutes are done by the assessor's office under their regular salary. I don't believe they get overtime for that. But minutes need to be right. Minutes have to be recorded anyway. So I just want to say I don't I don't know that financial you know that finances is a is a good reason is a good excuse for not 
recording them. I personally prefer to hear them all because I like to hear what the people say and as much as, you know, for my own self, if somebody says something and I didn't take good notes, I appreciate the ability to go back and re-listen to the hearing again so I can get more clarity on what the person did or didn't say and follow up with them if I feel like I didn't, you know, get enough information to represent them appropriately back to the board. So it helps me in that in that way as well, in addition to listening to all the other ones, because I don't think we ever come back and fully give the full 20-minute explanation that the person gives us when they're in the hearing. We give a summary. So I don't, I don't see a negative to it, other than you're saying privacy, and I, and I do believe they're publishing it. And I, I also believe Brenda wants all of the meetings to be, you know, recorded and posted on YouTube. So. Right, all the meetings. This, this we're not calling a meeting. So hearing, sorry, they're yeah. hearing. They're hearing. Well, they are hearing. Well, see what she said. She might say no, but but remember, again, to me, it's it's duplicating because we are presenting that information at the deliberations, which are recorded. They are FOIable. But everything is filed. They're um they're recorded. Anybody can come to the meeting, and all that stuff is posted on the website for people to read. So there's there's certainly access to it for the public. Um, well, we'll see what she says. She might change her mind. You never know. And by the way, not, we're not the uh, many other towns do not record these. They do not go through this process. Having been in on them in other towns <coughs> as early as last, as recent as last year, where I sat there and helped to somebody present their appeal, and not one thing was recorded. So I don't. I've called a couple other towns. They don't record them. So I don't see. We, and whatever happens, Kathleen, because. You know, you were on the board longer than we were. Why did they start doing that? Because we never used to do it. Well, it started because of the executive orders in place during COVID that it was required that if the meetings are hybrid or people are not there, then there has oh, okay. to be other access to the meeting. Well, so that's sense. how it started with executive orders. And well, then I believe, it, you know, they still have to be broadcast live if, if any of it is hybrid or you're taking appeals over the phone or any of that kind of stuff where the public can't get at the meeting there's not room for them in the room, then it would be done, you know, it has, has to be, there's rules about hybrid meetings as well, and some of our hearings are probably hybrid because people are on the phone, right, if they're calling in. So. Okay, well, I'll see what, uh, see what the powers that be have to say. You may be recording this. Oh, yeah, I need yours for that. Next oh, topic. I had to do this. Okay. Oh, we, did, we talked about civility and the code of conduct already. Okay. We need to um, vote on whether or not we're going to hear appeals, commercial appeals, and things like that. Over $1 million, residential not included in that. All the others are. All those in favor of hearing appeals over $1 million, please raise your hand. Kathleen? Yeah, I vote no. We all voted no. Okay, it's unanimous. We will not be hearing those appeals. Thank God. Next is discussion of the handbook. Oh, yes. Okay. Did you review that then? Or no, we're going we're gonna, to um, go off that topic for a minute. With regard to doing having uh, the fact-finding session. Excuse me, one question. So for the appeals over a million, you do do residential? Yes, residential. We don't have a choice. We have to do them. Oh, yeah. The state statute says we can choose whether or not we want to do the commercial. That's a lot of them. <laughs> That's, which was a nightmare the last time we did it. A lot, there's a lot of them, and it's, it's not really in our realm. I mean, they're just, that's way beyond most of us. Yeah. We need, we need more um, expertise to really do that properly. Uh, okay. um, a while ago, I don't, the last time I was on the board was way back when, when you were on it, Queen. Mm -hmm. The forms that the um, appellate filled out, that provided by the town, separated the land value and the, the structure value, the home value. Mm -hmm. I don't know when that stopped, but it appears as though the last couple of years it's not done that way. They get one, this is what we think our house is worth, and that's it. It's not separated out by land as one number and I'm pretty sure it was like that the last time I was on the yeah, board, last too. Time too. Yeah, now, when I left, because I left, you yeah, left right, before yeah, me. I left before yeah. you. Now, the reason that it came to my mind is that we recently had a meeting with the assessor mm -hmm. at the Board of Realtors meeting. And in discussion with the assessor about 
values in different neighborhoods and why neighborhoods were changed, um, where some neighborhoods are overvalued and some are undervalued by our minds, in our opinion. His comment was, I, I'm going to use Comfort Hill for example, how some of those places are, the land values are ridiculous, even in the high market. And he said that people don't buy houses based on the land value. That's not the only thing they look at, which I'm sure is true. They look at both. So I thought that brought up an interesting theory about, well, we used to do it that way. So I'd like us to take a vote on whether or not we'd like to go back to that way of, of having their, their forms sent out so that they can choose to, so they can be separated so they can give us what they think their land is worth and what they think their home is worth. So which item is this? So it's not an item. I added it in. I'm sorry. So it's part of my discussion of what we're doing. So what you're saying is, we're, are we asking the taxpayer to do more work now? They have to break out well, it's land and house but to come to their recommended. No. I it's think. not really more work because if they get the field card that they're supposed to, it's broken out for them as far as what the town says it is. Right. And then that gives them a guide to say, well, yeah. I don't think my lot is worth $700,000. And they would have to find the, the proof that it's not. Yeah. And then take a value. I, I think it is. It's a, probably a worthwhile education for them as well. Yeah, because we end up discussing it and breaking it down ourselves. Yeah. So why not? Yeah. Because you know, in my mind, I, when, I'm, when I'm looking at the appeal, I'm looking at that in my own head. Like, mm -hmm. how could this be, you know, this can't be. The mm -hmm. lot's too much. Mm -hmm. Okay. So and, and, and not many, enough. Maybe they, you know, maybe and, they didn't think it was enough. And oftentimes we do, um, we do have appeals that are pertaining to the land. Oh, yeah. Yep, the land value. So... So I, I think that, and you know, the, the, the form just has to be changed, and they just follow it. So it's really not that, that difficult. We'll have to have instructions on there for them. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I'm just wondering if that's worthwhile doing to try yeah, to make it I easier so. and more accurate when we when we actually decide on appeal. Mm -hmm. Personally, I think the more <laughs> information we can give them, the better. Okay. That's why I want to also talk about the appraised value as well as the. Yeah, value. I mean, I just year they after year after up. year. It's a the appellant, they, they just don't know, they don't know how to do it. They don't and know. how can we, how it's can on the we, website. I, I don't know what else I we know, know, but we're, we're not getting the message through. They're not, they don't understand how you know, to do it. I remember doing this with Katie years ago, mm -hmm. and they were putting down, most of them were putting down the appraised value. And then we would dig out, we would figure yes. out the assessed yes. value. We right. have to spell that out on the form. Yeah, so I, I really know. want that done yeah. too. So okay, so basically, it should say appraised value and assessed value, Which town's perspective, yep. land value, as well as uh, I, I'm thinking the land value and the uh, improvements, which is what home is, should be on the appraised. We don't want it broken up twice, but well, I mean, if it? you go to the if you go to vision appraisal, it's, it's a, broken it's a down there. Like yeah, no, it's yeah. appraised. And oh yeah, yeah, oh, it's both. It's right there both. for you. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Maybe it's, we should direct yeah. them more to that as opposed to just the field card. Yeah, like maybe that's where the directions have to be. Well, I think the field card in general confuses, yeah, confuses most people. people. Oh yeah, yeah, that's yeah, right. yeah, but you know, on vision appraisal, it it shows you. You're right. It is. Okay. So so okay. Well, we can. Would you like me to? Take a crack at it. I mean, I I to go, no, I can take a look at what. Yeah. I, I'm not even sure I know what gets oh, sent out, but like I can. Yeah, yeah that, and that's on the website. You can see the form that gets sent out, and you can see how you want yeah. to change it. So why don't we work on it? I need it to be simple, though. That's yeah. my goal, not okay. to confuse people. But okay. okay, I will do that. So, um, does anybody have any comments or thoughts about that? Okay. This is Kathleen. So my, oh, sorry, Peter. Go ahead. No, you go ahead, Kathleen. All I was going to say is that at the end of the day, we still have to vote on the total value. We cannot vote on just the land or on just the house. We have to look at the property as a whole. And when people submit appraisals, they come in with an appraisal for, you know, the comparable sales, right? You're not looking at it broken out. So at the right. end of the day, yeah. we, you know, we, we still have to go back to that number. So whether they, get, they tell right. us their land is, is too high, maybe their house is too low and at the end of the day we're looking at their total value anyway and we have to get their total value right. We can't get the you know, we can't just adjust their land and then bring their total value too low because their land happens to be too low, right? So or too high. So, you know, that's the dilemma for us. We start them doing that, but at the end of the day they still need to understand we're looking at total value together. We're not looking at it broken out. 
Right, but we used to do that before, if you remember. We would look at, you know, look at the land value, look at the home value, and if we really felt that there was enough of a reason to reduce that land value, we would. We were doing that. Then we would let the assessor decide how he wanted to make that change. Right. But I'm happy to do it that way. I'm sorry? But then they will come in and often they'll only fill out the land value. Like we had a few of them at the beach last year or two years ago, right? They only filled out the land. Well, I'm not appealing my house. I'm just appealing my land. And we're like, no, you know, you have to appeal the whole part. You have to give us a number for the entire property because that's That's really what we're we're reviewing. We have to stop them from doing that, right? And then, you know what? Remember, you're going to look at this paper. It's fact finding, so you could just say, we need a value for your your house. You can't just appeal the land. Yeah, total value. That's really what, that's all we are really interested in is total value. The rest of it is the computer, right, the computer system that tries to, tries to assign value to a property, to a, to a land, and then the improvements on the land. That's really what the software does, and that's how the software breaks it out. But at the end of the day, it's about the appraised value of the property and, and comparable sales, right? But, right? but if the total value becomes a lower number because of the lower land value, I, I think that's relevant. Yeah, as long as the property is worth that, you know, yeah. is, is yeah. value too high as a, as a total, yeah. then you're going to say, okay, I, I know the reason for that. The house is probably about right, but the land's too high, so we're going to bring the land down, and then the total value gets correct. Yeah. We do that right. when we make the adjustments, not necessarily. I mean, right. you know, we used to go there, and I think people used to get confused by it, but, I mean, you want to go back to it, we can. It's just at the end of the day, we still have to explain to them well, you know, you can't just appeal one or the other. And that's what they do. They look at their neighbor and they're like, oh, my neighbor's lying higher or lower. And, you know, they go in circles. Yeah. Yeah. Let's we'll tell them we won't do anything. <laughs> it's not filled out. Right. It hasn't been filled out. I mean, yeah. if, you come, if you come with only, with nothing filled out, absolutely nothing filled out for the house because you're only appealing your land or that's not acceptable, fix it. Yeah. If you come and say, well, I'm only appealing my land, so I'm leaving my house the way it is, that's okay because you've given us the value of your house. Mm-hmm. So let me give, uh, give it back. back at it. I just want to say too that uh, I, I don't really know about the form, but I mean, is it is it a statutory form? Like no. it's not. Okay. No. Be, I mean, the assessor's be, office, I think, is the one who designed it. Yeah. Yeah. No, we did. And a couple of years ago, we tried to make it a single page application because it used to be like three pages, and it had all the instructions in it, and it was all you know all all in were like six pages and half of it was instructions and then the form and something else so we tried to break it out and make it just a form and then here's the instructions and you print out the instructions and you use these to fill out the form because then the instructions can be eight pages and it can be on the website right and then the form they just fill out so that that was done I don't know maybe four or five years ago and it was a while, while ago that that was broken out so I think keeping it that way is helpful because you know, then you can just change the instructions when you want to update them without, you know, having to redo all the form and people, then people submit all six pages because you say, you know, submit your application and they send it in with four pages of text and it was good to keep them as two separate documents and then you just make your explanations clear and you don't put a lot of explanation on the form because you want them to read, right, the explanatory text. You don't want them to read, you know. You don't try to pack it all on. I mean, one of the instructions can be that they have to initial. I have reviewed all instructions <laughs> on the That's website. I'm serious. That's a good idea. Before, I've it. yep. We can know, do that. We can do that. That's a good idea. Initial it. That forces them. Oh, right. I'm so smooth. Because yeah. I, ha- I, I would, I would just look at the form, fill it out. I don't want to read instructions. And oh, if you make me have to, now I will. Yeah. Oh, I better, I'm I better read them because I can't understand. Right. Yeah, but if I'm slapped, I'll, you know. Yeah. Anyway, let me give a crack at it. Okay. I suppose. Okay. Are we we'll all good with that? That <coughs> we're going to change that form and make it more. Yep. Actually, it's more for, it's more usable for us that way too. So. Yeah. Um. Uh, now with the oath. Remember that when they're taking the oath, attorneys do not have to be sworn mm-hmm. in. Appraisers, yes. Pellets, of course. But attorneys do not get sworn into offices of the court. They're already compelled to give an honest presentation. Um, the oath that the appellate takes, interestingly enough, I said I went to Milford to do one. And I kind of like what they did at the end. It's probably not enforceable, but it makes you think. 
after they do their oath, it ends with, so help me God, and under penalty of perjury. Because if you're being sworn in, you're expected to tell the truth. And you know what? I had I to, to swear to that. And I had my hand up and I'm thinking, did I put anything in there that wasn't quite right? Uh, no, I didn't. Okay, so I used the comp. So, okay. I could, but it made me stop for a second and just, just pause and say, oh, uh, yeah, that's right. I, I, I told the truth. So, and it might make them think about what they're about to say if we think that somebody might embellish. I like to believe that they're telling the truth, but I think that might even just make it. If, how does everybody feel about that? Or, or are you saying, that, I'm not sure what we said last year versus what you're proposing. Same thing we said last year, but it okay. used to end with, I think, so help me God at the end. Yes. And instead of ending there, it would end with, so help me God and under penalty of perjury. Gotcha. Anybody, what does anybody feel about that? Anybody have an issue with that? I mean, as long as that's um, allowable. Well, Milford's doing it, We so. need to check with the attorney on that because it's, you know. He, I don't like checking with him on too many things. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it seems reasonable. <laughs> Three-hour discussion. <laughs> I think mean, basically what you're saying is that the, 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 consequence, of a, the, the cool. consequence of a penalty gives people yeah. pause. Yeah. Is that yeah. what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, all right. Well, let's see now. Okay. So, was it, were we okay with that? Does anybody have an objection to that? No, I would just say that this is a legal process, right? I mean, that's what the appeal is. It's a legal process, so I, I agree. I think the town attorney should just confirm that, you know, if this is legal language for the swearing in, that we should, you know, make sure we know what the law is, and then if we choose not to follow the law, then we do that. But I think we should know whether it's, le you know, it's legal language. I'm sorry. So, so just so I understand, do you think that we should ask the attorney? I think we should get his opinion, and that's what he's there for. He's there to give us his opinion, and we can decide to follow his opinion or ignore his opinion. But I think because, like I said, it's a legal statement, and we have legal authority as the elected BAA members. We have legal authority to, you know, to hear these appeals, to, to reduce people's taxes, to go visit their properties. You know, we are acting in a legal capacity in some way when we are you know, a, B, a member of the BAA. So I think these statements are probably based on law, and I would just make sure that if we're going to, you know, not follow the law, that we know that we're not following the law, so no one comes back. Okay. We'll have to make our own decision after I talk to him because I know what he's going to say. What he always says. Okay. Yeah, we can decide in February, right, if we want. We, I mean... We're yeah, we don't have to so for a couple talk months. to him and then we can just bring that up again in February whether or not this is what he said and we can decide what we want to do based on that. Mm, let's see now. Okay. Um, when we do the, the um, fact findings, I'm sure everybody probably does this, but I'd like us to be as fast as we can with our introduction so that it gives them, gives the appellate more time. You know, they, I mean, they should know who we are based on, maybe they don't know us personally, but they should know that they're coming to the Board of Assessment Appeals. This, they, should be not, they should already know what we do. Um, I think we need to introduce ourselves, and we need to make clear at some part of, you know, quickly that they, if, they're not, if they're not in agreement with our decisions, then they have the right to go to court. They should seek an attorney, and they're able to head to court. I'm not going to give the advice on what to do at court. That was a fiasco when I went. I think we were reading that narrative, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. What narrative? That big, long narrative? Yeah. That, yeah. I'm going to shorten that up. And also, just like, you know, at the end, saying that, you know, we're a group of uh, however many, you know, five, five, yeah, five of last year we were more. And, uh, you know, just so maybe if we just had something printed out, we could, okay. they could take it with them so that they know that when that they eventually will hear from the assessor. There's mm -hmm. no guarantee when, but they will hear in the next week or two when the their website, hearing probably, is going to be. You can probably just on the website too, but you know this way no, we don't have to keep repeating ourselves. Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, can take, they can take home. They can take it home with them. They will let you, will let you work on the form. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see now. It's going to tie into the instructions too. That's fine. And of course, when we meet with them, um, we're going to be making sure that if we're going to make that change to the land and the. The house want to make sure that, that that's reported correctly. We talked about that. We talked about the new format for discussion. What's next on the list, Carol? Um, it looks like you jumped from six to. I did. Sure. Okay. Approve the minutes uh, of, of the hearings. Of the uh, oh, motor vehicle. Well, that's the motor vehicle one. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, Kathleen, I think, sent that to us. She sent us the changes. Mm -hmm. Has everybody looked at that? Mm -hmm. I did. I looked at it. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> all in favor of approving those minutes as amended? Please raise your hand. I'm guessing it's unanimous? Yes, this is Kathleen, yes. Bye. Okay. Unanimous. So those minutes are now final and entered into the record. Mm -hmm. Next. Set ground rules for how deliberations will be conducted. Isn't that what we just talked about? Uh, yeah, we just talked about that. that. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to go, we're going to try to go in order. Now we're going to try it out. If it doesn't work for us, we can switch it at any time. It's not set in stone. We really don't, it's, it's a weird thing, this board. We don't, we don't really report to anybody. We don't report to the town. They don't want to be responsible for us. <laughs> and I don't blame them. We don't, the Office of Policy and Management, I tried going to them with help and they told me they're, they're not responsible for us either. So I don't really know who is. Somebody in the state is. We do have rules we have to follow. But, you know, we pretty much can change things that we want to change, which is good because I don't think a lot of the other boards and commissions can. So we have, you know, we, I think we have a little bit more leeway than some of the other places, which is why we can use the modified rules of order. Okay. Um, participation of the assessor and board. Oh, yes. Participation of the assessor. Now, what I really would not like to see is what we had at the motor vehicle meeting where it turned into having Ken come up and having him sit in the middle of the room and just have people talk to him privately and da 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 da, -da and we just have the little conversations and then we just waited to come up with an answer. That's not what he's for. That's exactly what I was complaining about that we do with the assessor. They are not supposed to be part of this group. They're there if we have questions. I don't know why we have so many questions about motor vehicles. There's only seven appeals. Mm -hmm. So, but if people need something clarified, that's fine. But I think there's a way to do it. I don't think that having them sit up here is a good way because it deteriorates into the thing where we just keep asking them questions. And before you know it, they're giving us way more than they should be, and they're now involved in the whole process of the deliberation. And that's really not acceptable. So, um, I've, talked to, I've talked to a couple others. I've been trying to work on this for a long time. I didn't want to be unreasonable because um, the assessor and I have a little history that may not be the most pleasant. However, I'm going to try to correct that. So, you know, I, I think he's a valuable asset to us to be used properly. Um, so what, what exactly are you proposing? So I'm thinking that um, we should go back to the way a long time ago it was where if we needed the assessor's help, and most of the time we needed his help with something explained simply on the field card. That's pretty much, or getting a field card. That we don't have anymore because everything's online. So we at least have the information. But I think this, this way that we're doing it where we can, we can send him little questions by email and then he responds and, and then we get way more information than we should have, from my opinion, like he doesn't, he doesn't get to weigh in and that's what happens. And it's not even his fault. We ask him a question, he's trying to give us the information. So I think that he's there for, um, if we have questions about it, we should put it aside like we used to do. Mm -hmm. And then um, we can just ask him particular questions about exactly what we have questions about. In other words, it's not the whole appeal. It's like, I don't understand this piece of it. For example, the farms. They're always difficult because that value is different than everything else, and he really has to help us with that. Um, you know, if, there's, if we're looking at whether or not the deduction was taken for things like being on top of the highway or high tension wires, um, you know, how did he, how did he rate that? Because sometimes, sometimes it's more than one thing. You know, it, it could be both of those things. So, so I'm trying, I, I, would it be that if, if we as the fact find person feel that we're going to end up having questions about something that we need his input, then we sort of table that and then in the end of all our deliberations we'll we'll have Yeah, I think we should do it. Rather than end. you're saying having him yes. be available at every single one, that's right. a waste of his time too. Yep. Um maybe that's what we Yeah, should I do. think that we should and you know what, there may be sometimes like I might have a question that I'm not clear on. But Helene might have already I think she might already have Kathleen might already know the answer. So we might not need him. Yeah. So I think we should try to solve it ourselves. That's what we're here for. But we've all been doing this a while now, except for you, Carol, it's only been one year. Mm -hmm. But the rest have been doing this a long time. We should be able to decide an appeal without so much of his input no, and, and I, assistance. Yeah, I agree with that. So I'd like to use him as the, as the resource that he should be when we need real serious help on questions that we should be, you know, we should be clarifying with him, not making those decisions on our own. But if it's, it's possible, I think we should work it out on our own. So I think we should, like, if, if we're talking about one, we can't come to an agreement or it's really somebody's really not comfortable, we put it aside, we go on to the next one, and then we get his help. We can call him and say, Ross, are you available on Tuesday? We want to go over these five cases. And we try to do them all at once with him, and then we move on. Have him come first so he doesn't have to wait. We do those beginning, and that's it. And as far as 
hearing those um, so doing the deliberations. We've tried it. I've, I've been on where we've done it by neighborhoods, where we've just picked randomly out of a, a box of stuff. Um, but I think that because there's more involvement from outside now, because people are listening in, um, and some, a lot of them are their own, they want to hear their own appeal, I'd like to propose that we do them in numerical order. Because this way we know that they'll get the hang of it. Like, if it's taken us, if we're doing like 12 a night, then they kind of know, all right, well, I'm number X. So I'm not going to, I'm number 50, so that's going to be a while. I don't have to listen every night. I can check in here and there and come up with my night. Because um, I think they have the right to be able to hear their own appeal. And there's no way to tell them what it's going to be. We, we, you know, exactly. But by doing it in order, I think it, it's, it's easier for them, and it's also easier for us when we're keeping track of which ones we did and which ones we didn't do. Yeah, I mean, the only downside is, didn't you, didn't you collect them by area or we did it. We did it with a condo complex, which I would say is the exception. Because yeah. if there's five, last year we had like five or six people from Cherry Circle that all had the same complaint. Yeah. And so we had Judy do those, and she presented them all at once so that we wouldn't have to go back and forth to it. Mm -hmm. To me, that's different. That's like one, okay. that's almost like one appeal. They're, they're all complaining about the same thing. Yeah. They're yeah. all the same units. They're all the same size, that kind of thing. Um, but I think other than that, I prefer to go in order. Um, I think it's, it's better for the public, and that's what we're here for. Yeah. I mean, unless it's a case of, you know, like the years that we've had Fairfield Beach Road, you know, Doing all those at yeah, the same time, that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But that was like the Ray Valley year, yeah. and and actually other years too. There's there are some some case. There is a case for some neighborhoods to be put together. That's one of the fair Let's see what comes up. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, I just that think that you're, you know, uh, I mean, it's kind of what you were saying, Elaine. Is that they, you know, you're, you're thinking about that neighborhood at that time, right? So you're not like trying to like, oh, let me go back to, you know, my, you know, my notes or whatever to, to figure this out, right? I mean, you're, you're talking about at that time, all, all that neighborhood or as much as that neighborhood is, you know, you can fit in that evening. That's, you know, um, I don't know, it just seems to me that would be a more um, efficient way of, of doing it. I yeah, and that might be the two tier. And that, and that Numerical might be unless there's a collection two or more with a right. similarity of location or condominium. But we but I think we wait and see. That's what we got. Well, yeah. I think it yeah, I, I think it's a, a better way to do it than one person giving like ten or fifteen yeah. in one night. It's that's, it's that's right. overload on your brain and yeah. exhausting. Um you know, if we had like, let's just say Fairfield Beach Road, it might encompass three different board members, mm -hmm. you know, to present that. But, but if we have a cluster of homes in one neighborhood, it would be good to do those all together. The only thing, and I, I don't disagree with that, but my, here's my only objection, which is why I want to separate it out. Mm -hmm. Too many times I hear, well, we have to treat everybody the same, and this is the same neighborhood. That's not really true. Everybody has to be treated fairly and equally. However, every house and every property are different. There are no, no two that are the same. So unless, like, you get two people on unless the highway the and they're complaining, and, yeah. or the condo. Yeah. But if somebody's complaining about particulars on their property, we can't, I don't think it's fair to say, well, what did we do to that one? Well, it doesn't matter what we did to that one because that's not this one. Right, right. And we get in this groove of thinking we could just do that. I think it was more from an efficiency standpoint that we were doing that, but I hear what you're saying. But, I mean, let's see what we get. It might, yeah. Let's, yeah. It might make sense, but yeah. I'm, I'm not opposed to discussing it again. I'm just saying that I think that, um, you know, my idea was to go in order because it's easier. Yeah. More for the I public. personally like to bang out a, a collection at once versus if I'm one and six and 15. I kind of like thinking in my head, okay, I'm going to present like five to, tomorrow night because it kind of helped me. So I would say if you're going to do it that way, I'd, we, I would prefer to have the clusters. I don't know how other people feel, you know, Carol, one through ten or something. I, I don't know. I, I, you're saying that was too much presenting? Well, and then I, the other thing is it, it also allows people to say, well, I can't come tonight. I mean, <laughs> I'm just saying back in the day when we were first on it, we were here every night. <laughs> every night. It was rare that we weren't here. And it was just like And I've noticed in the last few years, the last couple of years, it, it, it's easier for people to say, oh, well, I'm not 
presenting tonight, so therefore, uh, yeah, I can't make it tonight. Uh, I mean, the job is what it is. We, you know, we signed up to do this, and it's crunch time in March, and we should be here on most nights, yeah. you know. That's just my opinion. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. I agree. I think we, you know, that's part of it. You're supposed to be here, so, because even if you're not presenting, you have an opinion, and you were elected to be here, whether you're prevent, presenting mm-hmm. it or not. So, you know, you need all stuff. You can't, you can't. But and then it's not fair to the appellant either when you have a, you know, a, a majority of one one side or the other, you know, and the, the way the voting goes. I don't know. It's just, it just should be, you know, a balanced representation. Mm-hmm. Well, let's see what we get. Let's see what comes up. But we can, we can make the final decision again in February. But... Mm-hmm. Let's, I mean, I, that's what, that was just my idea, that it would make it easier for the appellate. But, you know, if it doesn't well, work, You make a work. good point with the appellate, like, you know, because they never know when yeah, they They don't know. No. I got a lot of They also don't that. know why, the whys. Oh, yes. That's an interesting point. Yeah. Um, I was reading through the handbook, which I do periodically because I have nothing to do. <laughs> Since I can't go to work really. So I just read this book. And there's something in here that talks about how um, the minutes should, they don't have to contain every single thing that we say, but they should contain certain elements. And one of the elements is that when the, that each person's vote is recorded with their name, which we do, but that the reason for the, for the denial or the um, approval is supposed to be in the minutes. Because people have the right to know why more, more denied than anything else, because they might be the ones that want to go to court. So they have the right to know why we denied their appeal, so they can take that information and use it when they go to court. Mm-hmm. I think that I would love to do that for the deny. We don't. We don't have to really do it for, for, right. for the right. for denial. It's like getting an F on a piece of paper, yeah, and, and then the professor never yeah. gives you your test back. I mean, right. it's like, well, yeah, what? You, yeah. And, and I, we're making them the burden on the burden them to back on them. listen right. to the, the Yes, the I agree. And and I just yeah, get a paper that's not their burden. Burden. Denied. It's not yeah. I did it. I listened to one for a client of mine with him. I sat in his office for like almost three hours listening to the because we didn't know when, when his appeal was. And it was at the, it was near the yeah. end. I was there every single one of them. I thought he was going to rip my hair out. But we heard it finally. So And then we realized the reason why. And then he was screaming the whole time. So it wasn't a pleasant experience. Yeah, I mean, I just, I just want to add that um, we do record, you know, the hearings are recorded, so they can go back and listen. And I believe Kathy time stamps when we start the deliberations on the hearings, so the time actually goes into the spreadsheet and into the minutes so that a person can go back and listen to the full discussion afterwards. I mean, you can ask Kathy what she thinks about trying to summarize for each one of them the reason. I mean, I think sometimes if they submit their paperwork late, that's a very easy reason why to put in the minutes. But I, I, it might be a slippery slope to start explaining, you know, why they were denied when we're not necessarily in agreement. So I just, I think it's hard because it's opinion sometimes, right? On real estate, it's not a fact. So I just, I don't know if that's a good idea. I think maybe we should just communicate even in their decision letter, say, look, your, your, yours was heard at, you know, Tuesday, March 9th at, you know, 8 p.m., we discussed it, and, you know, you can go listen to the tape, and, you know, here's the link, or this is how you find the recording of your deliberation, and that, and in right. that so way, they can hear the full do discussion. Do we currently have that in that letter, Kathy? I don't think she, she, she No, no, that. it's not in the letter, but it is yeah, in a minute. That's, so that's, that's we're good recording idea to put that. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Probably part of a mail mail merge if they just if it goes into the spreadsheet and we're we're mm-hmm. accurate about recording, you know what to, how far into the mini- meeting it is, they can go back and find it. And I think for you know then that, then they can hear everything because it's just I mean that's Kathy true. can give her opinion if she wants, but I think it's going to be hard mm-hmm. for her to do that. Yeah. And it's a it's and to you know to write all those summaries for people. But that's my opinion. And I, I also think that we they. You know, we, we could, can, uh, you know, let's just say we've, we've got a schedule. We're saying we're going to hear appeals, you know, one, let's just say one through six tonight, right? We have the ability to communicate with those appellants and say, you know, you're going to be heard tonight. So either, you know, come and listen in or, you know, listen in on the, online. 
um, you know, we have, I mean, we can do that. Like, I mean, that can be, I, I guess it hasn't happened in the past, but we can say, look, we're hearing your appeal tonight. So, you know, be Wait, prepared. Definitely. I mean, if they can't, they can't make it. I mean, that's, you know, unfortunate for them, but they have the opportunity then to go back and listen to it. And when, well. when do we say that? We we personally reach out to well, some or or the assessor's office, you know, can reach out to people and just send them an email saying your you know your or a text message saying your appeal will be heard tonight or you know I mean then then we have we had some some notice to each of the board members to say you know be ready with you know this this appeal this appeal right so you know we can do the same yeah. thing to say. In the past, we used to post it on the website that tonight we're going to be deliberating, I don't know if it was last year, but two years ago and prior, you know, a few years before that, we would post tonight we're going to be deliberating, you know, neighborhood 36, the beach, uh, Greenfield Hill, and this neighborhood. And then people would listen, you know, we just would tell them to check the website at 4 o'clock that afternoon to see, you know, what, what we had decided we were going to discuss that night because we know what it's going to be, right, because we have to be prepared. It's just a matter of posting it, you know, them posting a news feed on the website, which was very easy. So we did that with the beach, you know, when we had those 600 appeals or whatever a couple of years ago, and that calmed them all down because they could go to the, you know, they could go to the website and listen on the nights where we were going to be talking about the beach, and then we were talking about Greenfield Hill, they, they didn't care. Or, you know, you can do it the other way. Tonight we're going to deliberate appeals number 1 through 10, you know, and then they know what their appeal number is, and they can decide to listen in or not, but sometimes they want to hear their neighbor, you know, they're, they're, they are more interested in hearing what, what people, what the conversations about their neighborhood than they are about, you know, number three before them and number five after them or whatever. So that's, that's not hard to do because we, you know, we already know what we're going to do, right? So I'm not clear on what we're doing. Are we, we're talking, are we talking about So in our denial letter, can Deliberation, we yeah. And on yeah. the denial, you know, the other thing is sometimes I'll, you can call them if you were the hearing officer afterwards. You know, I think we do, didn't we do that with a couple of the cars this time, remember, because there were people who, who appealed their motor vehicles and one of you were going to call them afterwards to tell them that it was because their accident was in 2022, we couldn't consider it when we were, you know, because it was as of October 2021. I don't know if it was the Camry or there was one car that had been in an accident. So we, you know, but to give them the information to come back next time. So sometimes, you know, you can reach out to them too. I mean, you get in the slippery slope, you get into a negative conversation with them and then you get angry if they got denied. But you certainly, I don't think there's anything stopping us from reaching out to them. Kathy, I have a question. Um, Kathy, what I was proposing where it goes into the minutes, the reason the appeal is denied, is that difficult for you? I mean, you have to, we're not asking you to write a paragraph. No, I know. It's not difficult if, if you state why. She's just going to ask us to state yeah. it. Right. We, have to, <laughs> we have to state it. We have to no. state it. Right. Yeah. Right. We can't allow her to, or expect her to sum, yeah. summarize. But how time-consuming is it for you to, to, to put in the letter, like, the time stamp of what, you know, or the... I put the time stamp in, in the, the denial letter. letters now. No, I don't do, don't the, do denial the denial letter. Oh, uh, relying on minutes, I have the time. Stamp. Okay. We're, we'd be relying so. on the assessor's office to do it, which means we're giving them extra work, and I don't know how they're gonna. We can ask them. I don't know how they're gonna cotton to that too much. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so they they Just do the a mail, mail merge. merge. It's easy. Yeah. yeah. The mail merge. Yeah. It's very easy. So if the if the if the time went into the his, Ross's spreadsheet. He just does a mail merge. He selects any of the appeals from last night. He generates the seven letters and he puts them in an envelope. That's or actually, the chair is supposed to sign them. The secretary is supposed to sign them. Why create yeah. more work? All she, all Kathy has to write is, "Plot denied. Not enough information on blah blah blah." Carol denied. Um, you know, comps not not reflective of the appeal. What what why? Oh, don't don't forget because we may not be in agreement on on the denial or the approval. And I think you're putting one person's opinion. You know, I, I think how we vote is tends to be an opinion. It's not a black and white thing. So I think I don't know that you can, you know, unless it's unanimous as to the reason why we're, you know, we're all voting 5-0. But if they the vote 3-2, which is, you know, very, very likely on this board, then we're not just necessarily so going to be unanimous. We're only, so. we're only doing it for appeals that are denied. We're not doing it for every appeal. So there would be a majority who denies it. 
And if the denial of reason is because of blah, 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 then why can't that just say it in the minutes? What does it matter? It's going to be said somewhere. What does it matter if it's in the minutes? It's just a lot easier for somebody to say, my appeal was heard on Tuesday, the, the, you know, the 5th. Okay, let me get those minutes. Oh, yeah, here it is right here. Well, Paulette, last year, like, you voted yes on some, and they, and they failed. So you voted yes, but other people voted no, so they failed one six or you know I'm just using that as an example. But in that case, do you want you know other people's reasons being communicated to the appellant when you didn't agree with everybody else's reason? So no, just it's okay. Right. You know, I mean, I look at it this way: like you know. this is what I believe after I've read it or after I've reviewed it. This is my opinion. It's the opinion on what yeah, I'm just saying. Why I voted this way. Yeah, I think try it. I just think it's going to be hard. That's all. I think it'll be hard. Or one or But I, I also think we should, with the mail merge, if it's that easy, then just... No, well, I can't be able to do Okay. Yeah. 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 So I guess as long as it's somewhere, so that, that they can take that information yeah, because and use it to their advantage. They're denied. They're going to want to they're listen to yeah. that appeal. And you know what? It might make them not go to court. They might think, well, I'm going to court. And then they read it and they say, well, you know what? Man, Talk to the attorney. He might say, don't bother. It's a waste of money. Just go on with the taxes. I mean, if it's that easy, then every letter should have the time stamp on it. But if it's yeah. a well, process, if there, then if it's, just the denials. Yeah. If the town's going to go to court, you know. I mean, if an appellant's going to go to court, you know their attorney's going to go back and listen to our listen to what we had to say, right? Because they're going to want to know what our opinion was. Even though it's you know supposedly doesn't it doesn't hold weight it kind of does and if we figured something out then you know why would you want to waste your money hiring an attorney if you know you know likely that the courts are going to come up with a similar decision just you know as part of the fact fact finding for the appellant if they want to go to court so I mean people go back and listen if you you know look back at the appeals the ones that are denied you know those there are it's not like you have like two viewers for some of them. I'm sure their attorneys are going back and listening anyway. So it just makes it easier for them to go find it. If they yeah, I just want to make it know. easier. I think that they have a right That's to That's what know. I would do. And I think that we should try to make it easier for them to access the information as well. Okay. okay. Whatever way mm -hmm. it works, it's fine with me, yeah. as long as we get to that goal. Okay. okay. You can I'll check the assessor's office and see if they can do the mail merge. Okay, what's that? Uh, to, I'm not sure what you meant by this. To transact... Any other pertinent business? Before oh yeah, that's before yeah, yeah. Mentioned? Anything, anything that we want to we want to talk about. I had a couple of notes. Let me just go quickly look through them. We did the schedule. Oh, um, I think you know reading this, reading the handbook again. And I know that we've done this in the past, but I don't think that we do it a lot, and maybe we don't do it enough. I think that when we're hearing, we're doing a fact finding, and, and we have questions about the condition of a property, um, and we're not clear on it. You know, sometimes people provide photos, which is great. But what I want to avoid is what we had a couple of years ago where a woman came and not only did she have photos, but she showed us the topographic, topographic map. It showed you how bad her property was as far as the slope. And she got denied because nobody believed it. So I think that before we go and say, no, that's not, it's not that bad, we need to go out there and see it. So what I'm suggesting is when you have concerns and you really think that you can't go with this, then I think you need to go to visit the property. The handbook suggests that we should be doing it. Um, I've done it. I, don't, I probably don't do it as much as I should, but I'll try to do it more this time. And actually, the, um, the taxpayer, the public, was really happy. Mm -hmm. I went out to quite a few. Whether or not we would have voted yes, they were still happy that we took the time to go over there mm -hmm. and take it seriously. Yep. We ended up um, redoing that appeal and then granting it. But I think it's, um, it's worth taking a look at. All right. Can I just add any, any thoughts to if we have a very low number of appeals to hearing them as a board rather than hearing them individually? Have we ever had a very low? <laughs> well, I've, and I've, been on, I've never had less than 100 and something, so yeah. I don't know. I mean, I think that's too many but to do that way, but... Um, I don't know, I suppose... What do, you, what do you mean by a very low number? Like, just 30. I don't know. I'm trying to do the. I'm trying to do the math, right? If we do the math, I think we went from every 15 minutes to every 20 minutes, right? Last year, so we do three an hour. I don't know if there's 25. Do we want to just hear them as you know, as a group and figure out, you know, what is that going to take us 
two or three nights to oh, hear them together. 25. You mean no, 25 no. total in the whole town? Is that what you think? I have no idea. I'm just saying, if it's, yeah. if we get a I really mean, number, I guess we'll know in February. But I, right. I, I, can, I've not yeah. seen it in the six years, seven years I've done this. I've never seen it be that low. But Yeah, me, me neither, but I'm just saying, if it happens, you know, yeah. would you guys agree to, you know, think about doing that? I would, I would agree to think about it. I, um, yeah, yeah. I, don't really have, I don't really have a problem with it. Some, ta- some towns do it that way, right? I mean, there are other towns where they just hear them as a group. And, yeah. and, and sometimes right. we have three people on their, on their board, not five. Yeah, some, and they some just hear them and three. then they decide. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And some are paid. Some towns have paid, paid BAA members. Yeah, unfortunately we don't. What happened to dinner? We used to get dinner. What happened to that? <laughs> and by the way, where'd that money go? No, uh, COVID. I think that was the reason we ended up out. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I would, I would consider that if we really have a small enough number, it'll save us time. Okay. I doubt that'll happen. I don't think it'll happen, but you can yeah. hope. Yeah. And I just was gonna. I, I miss, I miss the vote on the, on the meeting dates. So, I mean, whatever you decided is fine. But Kathy, can you just make sure the meeting dates are put in the minutes? or attached to the minutes, whatever the approved meeting dates are. I think last year they didn't get included in the minutes, and so it's hard to go figure out what the schedule was. So if we can just make yeah. sure they okay. they get attached much, to the minutes. You know, we pretty much looked at the, the way, the, the, the thing that I, the email that I sent. It's, um, you know, starting on the first with, you know, with the fact finding and stuff, it's the right. day shift, then the middle shift, and then, the, you know, the evening shift. And then as soon as we're done with those, we roll right into the deliberation. Right, but did you did you pick a date for February and December and September? Did you add those three dates in? No. Okay, yeah, we need to approve those because you Wait, need to have yeah, uh, because you have to have it done by January first or whatever. You have to have it as part of your organizational meeting. Otherwise, they become special meetings, and we probably don't want to have the automobile hearings or our organizational meetings as special meetings. All right, you can't approve minutes. It just gets to be. Annoying. So if I mean, if we say the first Tuesday, like what is this? The first I'm Tuesday the in. Thing. I know, but we. Okay, I sent a follow-up email. Maybe maybe you guys didn't get it, but I that was. Okay, I so just wanted to right, add. Do that. Yeah, I want to. We can do that now. Whatever. I mean. Yeah. So we have our. And February, add those to the schedule. Yeah, we have the February meeting planned already, don't we? Uh, did we did you pick a date for that? I thought we had a meeting for February all set up. <laughs> I thought it was February 21st. Am I thinking of the wrong year? Let me see. There we go. Because we would have picked it last time for this time. February. No? Uh, I don't have I it. Thought we were picking, I thought we would be playing it. Okay, let's we'll plan that. Let's go to February then. Let's start with February. February. Yeah. 21st is a Tuesday. Right. Is that okay with everybody? February 21st? Yeah. Okay, so we'll take February 21st at uh, 5 o'clock? Sure. Okay, yep. so that's yep. it. Yep. That's our first meeting. I'm sorry, what is this meeting for? This is our first meeting. I don't remember what's wrong. A fact fighting meeting? No, 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 no. This no. is our meeting. Our meeting. Organization. Where you like start to talk about how many we have. Yeah, see yeah, how many yeah, we'll yeah. know by then how many we have and all gotcha. that. Gotcha. And then in September. So then I'm just going to put we need an agenda. Yeah, we September. Six, six. Uh, September. Do you remember? Da, 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 da. Uh, September 7th. Why do we always do it the first week of September? Yeah, we, we do. You just have to watch out for Labor Day and the Jewish holidays. Those are the two you gotta have to watch out for in September. Do we have to worry about? A it Jewish might be holiday? too early. For what? Do we have to worry about a Jewish holiday? I, th- I don't. I, I don't know when the Jewish holidays are this year. Usually they're later in September, so it's usually yeah. not an issue. But town hall might be. Oh, I forgot about. No, no, no. I, I think yeah. the public comes to that, so that's why. Yes. Okay. Uh, I don't know when they are either. Well, Labor Day is the 4th. Right, so we don't want to do that, and we don't want to do the day after Labor Day either, because a lot of people aren't back by then. Yeah. Does it have to be a Tuesday? No. Well, how about, how about uh, the 7th? Let I do the 6th, Wednesday the 6th, or? Yeah, either one. Uh, let's see. What do we do this year? Wednesday the 7th. We did September, Wednesday the 7th this year, right? 
Yeah, I think we did. So we did it Labor Day week, but we did it two nights after. Yeah, because you want the assessor's like office to be open. Yeah. Start, um, in the middle of the month. So we won't, with that week there are no Jewish holidays. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's do the 6th. That's a Wednesday. I'm okay with that. Yep. Okay. So 5 o'clock? Yeah, 5 o'clock. It's going to be like from 5 to 6 or something, and then um, I allowed a lot more time this year because I thought it would help people, but really we didn't need it. So, um, And we've, I guess we've never needed it. So we'll go back to the one hour for that, and then we'll start at 6 o'clock for the deliberation. And I guess the only other, for the, in case anybody, if anybody has any other business, we can do that. But you know, I just wanted to comment again that. No, sorry, we need, we need December 2. We need to do this organizational meeting for next year. Yeah, you want this to be a regular meeting, especially since you're voting on, you know, chairmanship and all that. And we'll have our new members, right, because there's an election next November. Oh, so we'll, so Yep, so we'll know two seats are up. So I think Peter and Helene's seats are up. So we'll oh, have, yeah, an, you know. So, oh, wait, you have to yeah. again. But they should, they should be, you know, I think they get installed the fourth Monday of the month. So whatever it is, we will have our new members, you know, they'll be serving in December when we, okay. have, when we set our calendar for the following year. Okay. So December 2023. December 5th. Tuesday. December 5th. Tuesday or Tuesday's not good for people. I don't care. But Tuesday's fine. It's fine. Actually, December 5th. You won't be happy here. The earlier the better in December. Mm-hmm. Yes, And then we just need to vote. We need to vote on the dates. You have to vote to approve the calendar. So I don't know if you voted on the other dates, but you have to vote on the date, the time, and the place, technically. Hold on. Collectively? Let's just vote on everything collectively. All in favor of the calendars the way we've done them with the, um, the December, September, February of next year, and also with the, um, our schedule for fact-finding and deliberations. Please raise your hand. Kathleen? Yep, I'm in, fa I'm in favor, yep. Uh, unanimous. Unanimously approved. <sighs> That sounds like a good conclusion sound. That's that ring thing that I hate. Well, we'll fix it. Let's go through the maybe else from the from the handbook that we needed to go over one more time. Um, oh, well, just keep in mind, um, non-arms length transactions. What you say? Non arm's length transaction. Mm -hmm. You know, we've we've been over this before, and we're not supposed to be considering those. However, I find, and I'm sure other people have seen it, that when they record the transactions at the assessor's office, they sometimes have no reason for making it a non uh, a non arm's length transaction. They don't know why they did it. They just did it. I shouldn't say they just did. It. They have a reason. The reason is they don't know, so that's what they did. But that's not good enough. You can't just make it a non arms length transaction because you think it is. There has to be a reason for it. Those reasons are clearly stated in the handbook, so you can, be, you can become familiar with those. Um, I have to check on something, though. I, I had something come up with a friend of mine, which is why I went to the appeal, where she purchased a foreclosure. But that was a few years before the reassessment. When she went to appeal the taxes, they told us no, based on the fact that it was not an arms-length transaction, but that was years before. So I don't know if there's, a, if there's like a deadline for that. Like, you mean she can never appeal her taxes because she bought a foreclosure? That's ridiculous. Hmm. 
So I wonder how long that goes for. Like I could, I would guess that if it's this year and you're appealing them, you know, you say, well, we bought a foreclosure. And even then I have a problem with it. That's the law, so there's nothing I can do about it. Because it doesn't matter. If somebody, if somebody bought a property, it's been on the market for God knows how long, and the bank carefully dropped the price where you would expect any homeowner to drop it the same way, not just bottom it out and get rid of it, dump it, then I don't see why those people should be penalized because they bought something that nobody else would buy. I agree. But I, can, I guess I can, do, I can work on that while I'm sitting home <laughs> and try to figure out if there's rules about that that we just don't know. I mean, I, 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 mean, I guess, I mean, I understand and yeah. I agree with what you're saying, but it, I mean, it, it would just be in, uh, it would just be in effect until the next evaluation. Uh, um, I don't know. That's what I don't know. I mean, yes, their taxes would probably right. change at the next yeah. evaluation, but if they continue to go up, I don't know what would happen. I, I, they, the minute you say that, like we went into this meeting, and this, this board member, who was a realtor, was like, I was totally shocked. He was the chair of the board, and he's like, yeah, no, we can't talk about this. Why? Well, I thought, well, wait a minute. That was years ago. No, 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 no. There was not even a possibility of discussing it. So she didn't bother to go to court, but I would have, but she didn't. So, you know, I just wonder, is there a time limit on what, what happens? Eventually, you, have, you should be able to, at some point, appeal your taxes. So I just want to know from Yeah, no. Answer. Yeah, I don't think... Yeah, there's, as far as I know, and, uh, you know, you guys have been on a long time, too. There's, there's no restriction that says you can't appeal. Anybody can appeal their taxes as long as they appeal them in time, right? You have to fill out the form and sign your right. name, and there's like three or four things. But there's nothing in the statute that says you can't appeal if it's in foreclosure. What you can't do, probably, is use that, the data from that sale as a comparable sale because it's a foreclosure. So chances are it closed at a lower price. So if they're trying to use their own sale to, you know, justify what they're asking for in their appeal, then I can hear, I can understand why someone would say, well, no, we're not going to use that as a comp because it's a, it's in foreclosure, it was a foreclosure sale. And that, that makes sense to me because often we do that, right? Because we usually know that they're lower than, you know, than a typical comparable sale. But there's nothing, I mean, I've read the statute, there's nothing in the statute that says, you know, you can't appeal if you've been in foreclosure. No, the statute doesn't say you can't appeal, but it talks about our responsibility, and it talks, I can't remember the exact wording, but it's something about, like, I don't think we're supposed to be considering granting those appeal. Um, I have to reread it. The, there was something about it. Yeah, so if that's thought, the comp, if they're, looking, right? if they're looking for their sale price, right, if they want to go right, down to what they paid price, for yeah. it. Right, then I would say probably not because it was in you know, because it was foreclosure, so it's not a mar it's not true market value. You know, well, it's probably it not yeah, a good comp. Yes, yeah, so, uh, sometimes, sometimes it is. is. I think uh, you just have to look at it at a uh, case by case basis yeah. because the fact that it it's a foreclosure, it could have been sitting there for five years and and gone downhill considerably from what it was when it started. So right, it, so you're right. Very well, you're right. You can look that. right. But in general, that's what we we're just we are cautious about, right? About foreclosures or uh, and, and non arm's length transactions. There's actually codes on the field card, right, that explain why the why the transactions are coded as um, right. not so arm's to, length. That kind of and stuff. I think that's what that's what made me bring it up because we've had to ask the assessor why, and sometimes it's not really it's not one of the answers we're expecting. Well, we thought it wasn't. Well, you can't think it wasn't. You have to know it wasn't. So like, if, if no, we're no, those, we just want to look more carefully at those, is all I'm saying. Yeah, it's, there's a code, there's a table with all the different codes and reasons, and it's on the field card, and I think it actually may even come from some, something from OPM or someplace where what those actual codes are, because they are used in the revaluation data, right? So they, I'll look them up. I've read, read them, yeah. They're, they're, they're in a table, Ross, me to be able to the explanation, and like a one means something, a two means something else or whatever, and they, you know, when they're coded as non, not arm's length, then they, then they have reasons. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I guess that's it. The other stuff, you know, pretty much we can talk about later at the next meeting. Um, just remember that we're supposed to be considering appeals on the facts presented that affect value, not whether we feel the taxes that, that, that it's too much it's too much of a, a change in the value um, whether we like it or not if it's the value it's the value uh, and again with the appraisers I'm not saying that we have to accept every appraisal as is without question 
However, we in the past have had a habit of arguing whether or not an appraisal was valid based on what we thought, and it doesn't matter what we think. I might think it's right, you might think it's wrong, but it doesn't matter what we think. What matters is what's factual about it. If the comps reflect the value, we don't have the right to say, well, I think they should have used the comp on Main Street because I like that one better. No, it doesn't matter what we like. He uses them for a reason. And the appraisal, remember, always counts more than the broker's price opinion because that appraiser is trained, educated, licensed. The realtor is not. They're licensed to sell real estate. They're giving you their opinion of market value, but it's the appraiser's value that holds more weight. So I just think that we, and again, there's plenty of people here that have done this before, so we should just look at them and decide whether or not we're willing to accept them. But what I don't want to see happen, especially on the record, is that I don't want to see us saying he could have done a better job or things like that. There's no reason for us to disparage his work. Nor should we be saying that I don't want to hear, again, you know, are they telling the truth? Well, they swore in. We're assuming that they did tell the truth. We have no reason to wonder that they're telling the truth. So they're telling the truth. I mean, there's only so much we can do. I want to hand these out and we'll get moving. But, Carol, did you work on this or did you just send this over? I didn't work on it, no. I sent it over. I'll email it to you because you're not here. I'll give one to Peter. Hand that to Peter, please. Oh, I have that on my computer. Can you give it to Peter? Oh, yeah, yeah. Thanks. It's something that the conservation department worked on with, I guess. It's a new, yeah. Because we have a new conservation director, and he wanted to send out this fact sheet. I guess he worked with a realtor or some people on it. I think Linda Raymond was working with him on it. But it talks about, you know, on the left side it talks about what happens, what to do, and what happens when you have regulated property. And then on the other side it says what's in it for me, which I'm not so concerned about that. I'm more concerned about the other side. The reason I bring it up is because, you know, when we talk about conservation property, again, it's always like, so what? They'll get a variance. You know, we don't really think through what it takes to get that variance and when you have to get one and how really you can do nothing on that land, not even an inch of digging, as it says on this paper, or adding any soil to it unless conservation, you've been through the conservation process. So when we look at this value of property, if it has restrictions on it, then it can't be the same value as something that's a clean piece of property with no issues because there's going to be something that comes up. He makes this sound simple, and some of it is. But having been through this with other clients, it isn't as simple as it looks. But, you know, it's there so we can get an idea of what they do. And that may be it. Let me just take my remote. It should be a little harder on the 830G guys. Yes, it should be a little harder for the 830G people. And not buy it for their children and then pay a third of the taxes that everybody else pays. Talk about a waste of money. I think we went over everything I had on my list. Does anyone have anything else they want to bring up or discuss or have questions about? No. No? Okay. No, just one thing. I would just make sure that somebody gets in touch with the town sooner rather than later about getting us the rooms that we want for our appeals because I think, I know two years ago and even last year, you know, we got whatever. At the very last minute, Dave Kelly was running around setting up the phones and trying to figure out where we were going to be. And I don't know if they've been doing construction in Old Town Hall, but I think it would be good to just start the ball rolling on, you know, getting us the equipment and things we need to have in, 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 for the rooms to be available at the times that we want them. You know, get to get on the Jen Carpenter's calendar and make sure we have a WebEx number and all that stuff because they get, it just gets difficult, that's all. At the last minute, Dave Kelly last year, right, he was, I don't know, swearing at me or something because he was plugging in phones. But. <laughs> <laughs> not swearing. I take it back. He was not. He was, it was just really hard because he was super short. Sure was, he was yeah. not swearing at me. He was short-staffed, and they had to run a lot of wires and do a lot of work at the, at the very last minute and to get the room set up for us last year. So, you know, we have less, right? We don't have as big a board as last year, so we probably don't need as much. Maybe we don't need as many rooms as we've had before, but it just would be good to give, you know, them a good, good size heads up so that they're not scrambling at the last minute to, to set up for us. And hence, why it's a problem to, to record everything. It's a lot of work for them, especially at the last minute. But we'll see. Okay. Um, well, are we going to let appellants? Are we going to let appellants call in? Are we going to require uh, them to well, come in person? Well, I think that's going to be up to them. I mean, 
Um, I personally up to who? I personally don't get too close to people, but then I've had I have to learn to live with this my own way. So um, I I'm not going to insist that they talk to me on the phone. They want to come in, they'll come in. But there might be people out there that have some health issues and will not come in. Then we're going to have no choice but right. to let them do it over the phone. Yeah. So that's why we're going to need the equipment like we've had in the past, right? One to one to do the WebEx and another one to call the appellant. So we'll probably need the two phones in the room like we had last like we had last year and and the year before. Well, um, just to, and I. I'm sorry. What I'll do is I'll um, I'll make arrangements to talk about to talk to somebody higher up about whether or not we're going to have to do this, whether or not we're going to have to record them. Um, and if not, then we don't have to worry about it. But if we do, then we'll have to get ready. Nothing yeah, we do have to broadcast them live. And I think these days, like I said, I think you might even have to give people a hybrid option to come, you know, to be able to attend via hybrid. I'm not, well, I don't know if there's a lot of changing on that. But. Yeah, we may have to. We may have to give them the hybrid option to attend still, which is fine. I right. Um, which means you need to. Whether or not we're recording them is going to be dependent on what I'm told later this year, hopefully soon, about what the town's going right. to allow us to do. But even if you're not recording, you still need the public to be able to listen in, in which case you're going to need the second phone. No, that's what I'm saying. The, right. I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. If, we, if they're not hearing and they're not covered under FOI, then they don't, have to, they don't get to listen in. The deliberations, okay. absolutely, but not the, not the fact finding. Um, I don't understand why so many people are interested in what somebody else has to say anyway. I could care less what somebody comes to an appeal for. That's just me. Um, okay, if there's nothing else, then I think we're set. I will, I'll try to figure out whether or not we're going to be able to not record the fact finding. You're going to work on the, Carol's going to work on the, on, on Friday, mm -hmm. on the forms. Mm -hmm. um, and the related instructions. Okay. And then as far as the schedule goes, I guess we'll be working on that in February. Um, but some of those, you know, some of those sessions are done in the morning. And depending on how many people we got, it may, get, it may not be an issue. We may not get that many, and it may go smoothly, and I'm hoping for that. Um, but if it doesn't, then we end up with a lot of people like we did last time. Remember, this time we're not allowed to have any extra members. Yep. So oh, really? We can't, they, you can only do that at certain times, and we're beyond the time. It's the year of the eval, and then the following year. Of the oh, I didn't know that. We can't do it every year. Okay. So we don't get any extra help. Okay. Ugly. So we're going to have to work that out because everybody works full time. So we got to figure out what we're going to do with the morning stuff. And I guess it will depend on how many pellets need to be here before five o'clock yeah. with their schedule. So. Okay. Um, is there any problem with the schedule that I need to know about for now? No. Okay. All right, I think we're all set. No, other than I won't be able to do more, you know, I can't do mornings or afternoons. I can only do evenings. So. Same. Same for Peter, I think, right? Yeah. So then the three of us are stuck with. Which isn't so bad for me this year because I'm not doing as much work. Next year I will be doing more, but not a full-time schedule. So... Well, I guess we'll have to see how many people we let's get. Let's see I mean, how many we get. I mean, you yeah. know, maybe we can I'm all not, do you know, I'm not, Yeah, maybe, let's see, maybe we can do them all in the evening. I don't know. But, you know, again, this was, the schedule has always been this way, and it's a problem if we all can't participate in the schedule, the right, you know, mm -hmm. the way that, so that two or three people don't get stuck losing time from work. Yeah, I don't want to lose time from work either. Right. Let's we'll see. Yeah, I don't know that we're required to offer people daytime hearings if it doesn't work. For people, I don't know that you know. I don't. I'm, I don't think there's anything that says we have to offer mornings. I think we've just done it because some people, you know, some board members are, you know, prefer to hear them in the morning. And there may be some appellants, you know, especially like the attorneys, right, and some of the appraisers. They'd rather do it during their workday than be out at night. But mm -hmm. um, I don't know that we're required to offer daytime here. Well, let's see how many we get. Maybe it won't be an issue. Okay. If there's nothing else, I'd like to adjourn the meeting. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.